worship at Central United Methodist Church. I'm Melissa Gall, and I work as the youth pastor here at this church. I'm hoping today you don't have a sermon plan, do you? We have lots of announcements that I need to share, so I'll try and keep it quick for you. In your bulletin, you'll find that we have a separate sheet printed. We do have a lot of announcements coming up, which is wonderful because our church is alive and it is well. We do have a couple that we'd like to lift this morning. One is that, one, one is not printed, there we go. We do have our central raise, our monthly newsletter coming out later this week, and so there is much more information in there. So please take a look at that when you receive it either by email or in your mail this week. On the back of your bulletin, there's a calendar of events for this week. It lists that seasoned citizens will be meeting, but that is not correct. They are not meeting this week, so please make note of that. We are excited this fall. In just a couple of weeks, we have Rally Day. Two weeks from today is Rally Day. We will be starting our Sunday school at that time. Um, and we have our chicken barbecue, which we still need volunteers for, but that is an exciting time coming up. And at the Rally Day Sunday, that is the start of a different schedule for us. Our schedule for this fall for worship is going to look a little different. In your bulletin, you'll see that we are going to offer two worship services on Sundays and a worship service on Wednesday evenings this year. So our Sundays will be traditional service at 8.30, Sunday school at 9.30, and a blended service at 10.30. And then we will have a non-traditional worship on Wednesdays in the fellowship hall. We will still have our meal at 5.30, and then worship will begin after that at 6 o'clock. So that is exciting and we're really, we are anticipating that it is going to be a wonderful change for us and we are excited to see how this grows and changes our worship. In a couple of weeks on September 18th, we are going to offer a small group um, or a Bible study leader, kind of a crash course on that. If you've ever wanted to lead but you feel like maybe you're not equipped, you don't have to be an expert to do that, but we want to give you some tools that would help you in leading a Bible study or um, a Sunday school class, a small group discussion, anything like that. So if you're interested, that information is in your bulletin. If you are trying to contact the church office, our email address for the office changed a couple of years ago. We dropped the UMC part out of our address, but emails are no longer being forwarded from that. So up until now, you could email our old address and we would receive that email, but we aren't getting them anymore. So you'll see that it bounces back. So our email address is printed in there for you so that you can update that in your contacts list. We have several youth meetings and Sunday school teachers meetings coming up. All of those are listed in your bulletin for times and dates, so please make sure you look at that. And then I think my last announcement is that the Living Proof simulcast is coming up. We do still have tickets available, so if you haven't purchased one yet, please make sure you do that soon here. And then Pastor Tom has an announcement. Uh, I just wanted to say uh, how good it is to be back here. Uh, it seems like we were gone for a very long time. Um, and really what I wanted to say is uh, thank you again uh, for your support in uh, allowing myself and uh, my oldest two children to, uh, to go to Africa. It was an incredible experience. I share with people um, that I had expectations of what it was going to be like, and it far exceeded those expectations. And so uh, I want to thank all of you for helping uh, us uh, to be able to go on that trip. And sometime in the very near future, Arvid, Janet, myself, and my, and my children would like to uh, have some kind of presentation, uh, probably in the evening or afternoon sometime, uh, to share and update people. Anybody who's been uh, to Africa in the past, give them an update, share with them what uh, our experience was, have my children and myself share our experiences too. So. Uh, again, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. At this time, I ask you to stand and pass the peace of Christ with those around you.
Please join me in a moment of centering this morning as we prepare our hearts to worship the Lord. Please join in our responsive call to worship. The words are both on the screens or in your bulletins. We come together as seekers that we might learn what God would have us do and where God would have us go. We come together to renew our faith that we might bring hope to others, to the God who is the source of goodness and love let us sing our praise. Our opening prayer is in unison this morning. Please join me. You, gracious God, are love itself, and perfect love casts out fear. Come to us in merciful patience, we pray, to love us from fear to trust. Love us from our self-centeredness to hearts that willingly give themselves in selfless sacrifice and service. Love us out of our scarcity to hearts overflowing with generosity. Love us from brokenness to wholeness, from resentments and forgiveness withheld to forgiveness, freely offered just as it has been freely offered to us. Come to us, Lord, overwhelming us with your love, that we might love you as you have first loved us. Amen. Please join in our opening hymn, His Name is Wonderful. There is a misprint in the bulletin. It is actually on page 174. Affirmation of faith is also in unison this morning. Please join me. We belong to God, eternal and infinite, creator of all things and all that is to come. We follow Christ, who comes to us from God and reveals God to us. 
He heals people and transforms lives and calls us to join in his ministry. He was crucified, died, and was raised again by God and reigns over all creation. And he bids us to die and rise with him in the service of the healing of the world. We are moved by the Holy Spirit together with the communion of saints as members of the body of Christ, God's holy universal church. We are confident in the forgiveness of sin, the power of resurrection, and the reality of eternal life. In all things, it is our desire to follow Christ by the grace of the Holy Spirit, for God's glory. Amen. Please join me in a moment of silent prayer. Loving and gracious God, we come before you this morning with hearts that are open to your love and your grace. We are thankful for the rain that was brought last night as it washes all things new. It helps growth, and it reminds us that you are there. You help us grow, Lord. You've planted the seed, but help us to be the seed planters for others as well. You've given us skills, you've given us talents, and you've, you've given us tools to plant your love in others' lives, Lord. Help us to grow, help us to change, and help us to love each other as you have loved us. We come to you this morning with hearts ready to worship you, Lord, for we know of your love and grace. We want to think about and remember those, Lord, who don't know of your love and grace yet. Help them to find you, Lord. Help them to seek your face and know that you are God. As we seek you this morning, Lord, we think of those in our country and around the world who are struggling. Some struggle with loss, some struggle with addiction, some just struggle with things that they don't understand yet. We pray this morning for the two nuns who are Christian advocates, Lord, that were brutally murdered this week. And as we think of the two of them and their families and those whom they loved and served, we also think about Christian advocates around the world who die in your name, Lord. They are sharing your love and they pay the ultimate price just as you have paid that price for us. Help their names to be remembered. Help their memories to be cherished. And as we think of Christian advocates, we think of those around the world who meet violence and who ultimately meet death at times. There are people who are dying for reasons we don't understand and they don't understand, Lord. But we know that you are the one who can be in those tragedies and working even in the moment of tragedy to flip that evil for good. For you are good all the time. As we join together this morning, we know that there are some who are not here with us, Lord. Some we have lost, some who are hurting, and some who are struggling to find you, Lord. those in our church family, in our community, that we ask for healing this morning. 
include the family and friends of Dan Erickson, who is the father of Justin Erickson. We also pray for the family and friends of Robert Davis, whose life we celebrated earlier this week. We pray for their family and friends as they work to find a normal that is new and different in their lives. We ask that you are there with them, Lord. You be near to them and you bring them peace. We ask for healing for Dolores Cross, for Tim Smart, Beth Conrad Smart, Shauna Gardner and her unborn baby, Donna Gelhaus, Lincoln McCluth, Tom Tobin, Joyce Watkins, Molly Meisner, and Nancy Raymond. We ask for continued healing for Marlon Schultz, Ron Hastings, Del Cardwell, Joel Schmidt, Mary Worry, Caroline Gomer, Deb Polly, Wade Frosch, Jesse Bergerud, Cheryl Polly, and James Lindholm. We pray for our Children's and Youth Ministries committees. We pray for Melissa Gall, our seminary student, for Brittany Cooper, who works as a campus minister, and for Alyssa Page Quaid and the people she works with in Watford City, North Dakota. We pray for Parkview, Big Stone Tabor, and Ortonville First Methodist Churches. They are our brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord, and we, all, we are all working toward the same goal. Help us all to further your kingdom, Lord. Holy Spirit, be with us this day. Fill us with your presence and walk with us as we decide and act and speak. This morning we pray the words our Savior taught us to pray using the word sins. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand and join in our congregational hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory, found in the hymnal on page 577.
put down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. The host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. But then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you're invited, go and sit down at the lowest place. So that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you'll be honored in the presence of all who serve the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humble. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your neighbors in case uh, they may invite you in return and you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, that you will be blessed because they cannot be paid, but you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Here is the reading of God's holy word. I would ask the kids to come forward for the children's message. Good morning, guys. So what started this last week? School. School. So what do you think we're going to start up here pretty soon at church? What? Sunday school. Sunday school. Yeah, so I'm going to visit with you a little bit about Sunday school this morning. And I'm not only talking to the kids this morning, I'm talking to you, the congregation, as well. Um, Sunday school started a long, long time ago when kids were expected to work every day. But people took Sundays off for worship. So some people decided that these kids weren't getting any education. They didn't know how to read and write, so they started Sunday school. And what do you think they used to teach the kids? They used a certain book to teach the kids. The Bible. That's what they used to teach the kids to read and write. So we've used Sunday school for years and years to teach kids in various ways. And we have learned over the years that we all learn differently. Some of us like to read and see things with our eyes, and some of us like to hear things, like through the songs we sing, and some of us like to touch things and use our hands to figure stuff out. So we all have different ways of learning, right? That we like, that we learn the best. So last year, we had a Sunday school meeting, and we were gearing up to get ready for Sunday school. And I had a teacher that said, I can't do this. I can't sign up for a whole year of Sunday school. It's just too much for me. So we decided we would evaluate what we're doing with Sunday school, and we went to a rotational type schedule. So we are going to do a shortened version of what we do in Sunday School Quick for the children's message. So do you remember what we normally start out with in Sunday School? It's been a long time. We normally start with singing, don't we? We sing, we may play a game because it takes a while for everybody to get there. And then we watch a video, right, of our Sunday school lesson. So we are going to watch a video clip that the kids normally watch on Sunday mornings. Yeah, 
the funniest dream last night about a big fluffy elephant made out of cotton candy. <laughs> I've had funny dreams like that before. Hmm. You know, there was a person in the Bible who had strange dreams. Jacob lived in Canaan with his son Joseph, who was 17, who would also watch over the sheep with his brothers. Jacob loved Joseph so much that he made a special robe for his son. This made Joseph's brothers jealous. They had a hard time saying anything nice to him. Joseph had a dream about bales of grain that were all tied together. The bales of grain that represented his brothers bowed down to Joseph. So Joseph told them another dream where the sun and moon and the stars were bowing down to him. His brothers were so angry that they were thinking about hurting Joseph. But then his brothers spotted travelers on their way to Egypt. The brothers sold Joseph to the travelers for 20 pieces of silver. The brothers tore Joseph's robe to make it look like he was attacked and gave it to their father, Jacob. Jacob thought that his son had been attacked and killed by animals, and he was sad and he cried. But Joseph was okay. He was sold to a man in Egypt named Potiphar, who was the Pharaoh's chief officer. All that because of a dream. I wonder what my dream of the big fluffy elephant made out of cotton candy means. Maybe you're gonna get an elephant for your birthday. I hope it means you're gonna get some cotton candy. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see the video they watch tells a story, but it's pretty entertaining and they like tune into it. They got really quiet and they're, they're good at watching the videos. And then we break them into different age groups and we rotate to different centers. Do you guys remember what centers we went to? What'd you go to? Craft. We went to craft. Craft was one of the centers. So for this week's lesson, the suggestion would be to make a colorful robe. And then what other center would we go to? Okay, we'd go to games. I'm going to cover that one last. What's another one?